Share Shootout brought to you by Line of Africa Insurance, insuring South Africa's future. Before the break, we had Viv Governor from Bonani Private Clients pick first round in BHP Billiton. Byron not accepting the BHP Billiton pick. Byron's uh, two picks have been shot down so far. Nusbach and City Lodge both being consigned to the dustbin of Share Shootout history. Viv, you're going to go first this time with probably the maddest pick I have seen on the show <laughs> ever. Rainbow Chickens, 30 seconds, explain yourself. Well, firstly, Rainbow Chickens has had problems, we all know that, but it's going to be moving away from that. Had a rights issue, which I can now quite nicely. Uh, spotted by Remgro, has 70% of the company. In addition to that, the business itself is doing quite, is, is going to do quite well going forward. It's moving away from the commoditized sector. It's got about 55% value add to the business at the moment. I think with the kind of cash it's got through the rights issue, it's going to have a great deal of growth expansion going forward. And at the same time, the issues we had last year are once off. They are once off with the issues that are not going to be repeated this year, and therefore the results will look a lot better going forward. Okay. Well, you managed to fit in 30 seconds worth of talking in about 20 seconds because you speak so fast. Thank you. Right, so what is the value add you talk about? What is the value add you talk about? Are they taking chickens, slaughtering themselves, cutting them into portions and stuffing them with garlic? Is that value add in the chicken? Ba basically, you know, brand name behind it. You aren't just buying a piece of chicken, you're buying a piece of rainbow chicken. That's, that's something that would be a little special. Uh, you, if you look at, the, at the, any kind of commodity sector, you want to add a little value add to something there. You want to be differentiated. You can't just be the lowest cost denominator or lowest cost produ uh, producer out there because that's the way to but lose Astral, profits. But Astral does that already. I mean, they put stuff into boxes with garlic and parsley and lemon juice mm. and all sorts of things it's um, they do that already why would would you go anywhere near the chicken sector well everyone loves chicken <laughs> I like chicken myself but um, yeah but I don't want to own the shares <laughs> of the companies that produce it no the biggest issue with these companies is uh, um, is costs and uh, obviously with the weaker rand there their input costs are huge and they really are struggling and everyone knows this they're really struggling with competition coming from Brazil um, it's just a very difficult market to be operating in. You know, it's almost facing the kind of um, uh, issues that the miners are facing. Uh, input, input costs are increasing. Um, and the the you macro can picture you can import a drumstick from Brazil for cheaper than it is to grow it in KZN. Mm. That is damning of an industry. Not always, and not with the, with the round is right now. That's the issue. The round weakening is actually great because it just stops its imports from coming into a large extent here. So okay. it versus the way it was in the past versus what it is right now, it's actually changing. Do you take it or do you shoot it down? I'll definitely shoot it down. You do it down. I'm afraid feathers. <laughs> 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 you, you, you got BHP Bulletin. He gave you BHP Bulletin, but uh, at a market cap of 10 billion rand and a multiple of 40 times mm. and just too many moving parts and just one chicken's got to sneeze <laughs> and then it all goes pear-shaped. Baron, your last pick is also in the food space. Now you sit in a unique position in that two of your shares have been shot down, so we know he's going to have to accept <laughs> AVI, <laughs> but I'm interested to know whether or not he does it happily. AVI, 30 seconds. Well, what more confidence do you want in the food producing business than Warren Buffett buying a big stake in Heinz? But now these guys uh, are, are geared towards the African growth story. Uh, um, they've got good relationships with the likes of ShopRite and MassMart who are expanding up into the continent. Uh, yet they don't have to build any of the infrastructure. Those companies are literally going to take them up and help feed what is literally a starving continent. They've also got the luxury goods businesses, which is fantastic margins, and the aspirational consumer is a massive phenomenon of the developing world, and they are grasping that. That's where most of their margins are coming from. If ever I was to buy a second-hand car, <laughs> I'd be avoiding him. <laughs> <laughs> so, AVI, do you like it? Yeah, I do. I think the food industry is something that we should be looking at, especially as people get wealthier. People get wealthier, they lose calories much less effectively. Previously, when you're very poor, you take the thing straight from the ground and you eat it. Now when you get wealthy, you take it put into a cow, then eat the cow afterwards. And that's something we'll be seeing going forward. If people basically become wealthy in, in Africa, the demand for calories will increase substantially. But is AVI the best way to enter the Africa calorie market? I thought Rainbow Chicken was quite good, but... <laughs> uh, absolutely. Um, but, 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 that, but that's the point. He shot down your, your, your raw material production side in favor of process and mm. luxury goods. Um, the luxury goods is the part of AVI which never made sense to me. And now you see the results coming through in the last five years. Mm. That margin really just lifts the whole of AVI. It's, all, it's a hard one to shoot down. Yes, it is hard. I think the food sector is not, not going to do as badly as people think, and therefore I wouldn't shoot this one down. Why not? Why would you take this one and not Tiger Brands? Would you favor AVI over Tiger Brands? Look, I mean, Tiger Brands has advantages, of course, with the links to Nigeria, etc., and that's obviously something that we should look at. But I, I do think, you know, that being in, involved in the African sector is something that's going to be profitable, not in the short term, but over the next few decades, it's a great place to be in. 
Okay, there we go. Mm. He, he accepts it. He doesn't shoot it down. Mm. So, Byron, you get to survive on AVI on a multiple of 18 times. It's got a market cap of nearly 20 billion rand. AVI gets the big thumbs up, mostly because Byron's wearing funky shoes, and I think I know where he gets <laughs> his shoes from. You don't get to see those, unfortunately. Now, my job, as always at this time of the show, is to pick a winner. Now, tradition dictates that the person in the middle loses. The person on the far side um, gets to stay. But let's just run through it quickly. Byron Lotta picked Nusbath, City Lodge, and AVI. Nice, safe, conservative, potential upside across all of those. A strong Africa theme coming through, but it's an emerging markets theme, perhaps more than uh, more than just the the Africa theme. Uh, Viv Governor chose first round BHP Billiton and Rainbow Chicken. And as I look at the various picks this evening, the arguments that have been put forward, the responses that we've had from our contestants tonight, I have to say that my choice for the person who goes out this evening has got to be the person who chose first round BHP Billiton. And what was he thinking, choosing rainbow chicken? <laughs> Viv Governor, you're in the middle, which means you're not in the middle anymore. I hate to stereotype, I really do. Just because he was in the middle, he got shot down. No, he didn't. He got shot down for choosing rainbow chickens in an environment where the chicken business is really tough. And I really just don't see. First round, fantastic bank, fantastic business, decent returns. But do they shoot the lights out? No, they don't. Byron Lotto has got some interesting choices with Nuspat. Could it be a thousand rand share in two years' time, or do we sit with egg on our faces? Um, well, maybe we do, but the Nuspat story is a strong one. City Lodge's story is a strong one and a convincing argument that gets put forward by the management of City Lodge for a conservative growth path into the African continent, owning the assets and growing in that hotel sector. And AVI, can you ever bet against Baker's Biscuits. Well done, Byron Lotta. You get to come back next week, you lucky man, when he then has to come up with another set of shares which he has to defend to the hilt. That's all we have time for this week. We'll be back on Thursday on CBC Africa. Remember, catch me on Twitter. Give us your share, shoot out suggestions and your thoughts at Bruce Business. That's me. Catch us until uh, next time and we'll continue to pick out a winner and shoot out the rest when they pick chicken. What was he thinking? What was he thinking?